So the other day we talked about some positive injury news for the Crimson Tide, especially surrounding Trey Sanders. But today we need to focus on some bad news surrounding none other than talent and defensive lineman LeBron Ray. And we need to talk about what his groin injury means for the Crimson Tide as the season is right upon us and what this means for the Tide going forward. But before we do, as always, y'all know the drill. I want to hear from y'all. Hop down in the comments. Give me a Y for yes or an N for no. Do you believe this paves the way for some of the true freshmen to see the field early in this defense? Defensive rotation. Let me know what you're thinking there, and then let me know which names you're looking towards to maybe being guys to step up and fill this gap. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification. I do constant college football content, and you don't want to miss any of it. And if you enjoy that content, be sure to like and comment down below. But with all that being said, let's talk about what this means for the Crimson Tide. And look, LeBron Ray is an incredibly talented individual, and one that Tide fans were really excited to see this season. With the loss of Christian Barmore, the Crimson and Tide, though they have a deep defensive front rotation, they were really looking to LeBron Ray to be someone to step up in that loss of Barmore and be able to kind of help mitigate any loss that was felt. Now with LeBron Ray out, the Crimson Tide are having to go back to the drawing board and see what needs to be done. Now here is the silver lining in the whole situation. The good news about this, and y'all know me, I try and keep it positive and real at the same time, and though this is a hit, there's no way around that, the only silver lining in this is the Tide have had to play in LeBron Ray's absence before. Unfortunately for LeBron Ray, he has been bit by the injury bug time and time again, and we're hoping that this one right here only sidelines him briefly, and he's able to get back to action sooner rather than later, because he has a ton of ability that he's looking to put on full display. But in the meantime, this paves the way for other guys to see the field. And unfortunately, like I said at the beginning of this, this is such a big hit for two reasons. One, what it means for LeBron Ray, sidelining him for the early part of the season, and having him having to get back healthy once again. And two, it means that the Crimson Tide are now in a position where one of the veteran guys they were looking to lean on, especially in a year where they're already having to replace Christian Barmore, is no longer there. So that's two guys that the Crimson Tide can expect to have that absence of production in the early weeks. But the one good place about this is while the Tide have had to play in LeBron Ray's absence, a bevy of individuals have gotten a ton of positive experience because of it. Whether we're talking about a Boygby, Byron Young, Fedarian Mathis, DJ Dale, Tim Smith, the Crimson Tide have got a lot of veteran experience along this defensive front that we need to be very excited for. And especially with how the Crimson Tide usually base out of their defensive formations, they will still have a really healthy defensive rotation in the absence of LeBron Ray, but it is still a hit. The reason why I asked the question in the beginning is because Christian Barmore is no longer there, and now because LeBron Ray is no longer there, I think this paves the way for one of the new guys to maybe get in on the back end of this defensive rotation. Whether it's DeMond Payne Jr. and Quinn Barmore, I'm really excited to see how those guys navigate fall camp because LeBron Ray was really built as an incredibly athletic defensive lineman. I mean, our, us Tide fans know when we watch him, he stands out because he's six foot five, really lean, carries the weight really well, and is incredibly explosive. Now, both DeMond Payne Jr. only being one inch shorter at six foot four, 297 pounds, I'm very interested to see how Payne does through these early practices. Because he wasn't available to early enrollee. We didn't get that glimpse of him in a day, but he's a name that I would be very interested to see if he's able to get in on that defensive rotation. And Quinn Barnes, another guy that's new to the Crimson Tide, but could be a beneficiary of seeing some early playing time. And at the end of the day, the early playing time these guys find at the beginning portion of this season are only going to help the Tide down the stretch because if we have a healthy defensive rotation along the front, that's only going to keep fresh legs on the field. And offensive lines can't rotate the same way a defensive line can. And when you already have Chris Allen and Will Anderson on the edge and you look behind those guys, you got Drew Sanders, Chris Braswell behind them. You look behind those guys, you got true freshmen coming in. And that's not even to talk about guys such as King Makuta, who's still on campus, that could also come in and make Make a play. Your true freshman coming in, Keanu caught, and then Dallas Turner, the five star both names that are going to be pushing for early playing time, but I'm very interested to see specifically about the interior of this defensive line, because we can talk for days and days and days about the edge rushers. Bama has them in troves. I said that the Alabama Crimson Tide, in my estimation, have the deepest running back room in the nation. I also think that we could put them up there in the deepest edge rusher room in the nation. I mean, they have four or five stars ready to go right now, and a ton
ton of talented players outside of that that are all rearing to make a name for themselves. But the interior defensive line is one that we're going to have to keep an eye on with the news of LeBron Ray's injury. The only silver lining in all of this is that a bevy of guys got positive experience playing with LeBron Ray going down last year. But when you compound LeBron Ray's loss with already having to mitigate the loss of Christian Barmore, who exited the draft, this isn't really where the Tide wanted to be. But luckily for the Crimson Tide, they're in a position where, along with the experience the guys got last year, they have an incredibly talented defensive line. Let me know what y'all are thinking. Let me know the names you're looking at to get early reps as a part of this injury. That's it. See ya.